Hey guys, today in this video, I'll be giving you my tips and tricks to becoming a great player in Dragonville and what not to do. Coming up. Hey guys, it's G Man here back at again in a Dragonville Guy video. Today I'm going to teach you how to become a great player in Dragonville with these tips and tricks I'm going to support you guys with that I've learned over the years of seven years. So it's been quite a while, so these are my tips and tricks for you guys. So first of all, we're gonna head to the small account because the big account seems a little bit too much and I feel like the small account would be more good for this situation. So let's go there guys and so see you guys in just a bit. Okay guys, now that we're on the small account, I'm gonna cover a total of five different steps to what you can take to become a great player in Dragonvale for my tips and tricks and what things not to do. So. For tip number one we're going to cover is what gems should be spent on and what they should not be spent on. So that's going to be for tip number one. Next, for our next tip, we'll be covering items, what you should buy in game and what you should not buy in game. Number three, now this one's the cool one right here. What sites you can use to look at your breeding odds and what your chances will be and what you'll get from your breeds. This will help a lot. We'll cover this and cover some sites, but we're probably just going to cover one site I've used the most because this site has helped me a lot. I'm not going to say what it is right now. We'll get into it when we get into number three, guys. And step number four, we'll be covering my knowledge and what I've gained from knowing this game. Okay, guys? Because this, this is a really cool thing. You're going to learn a lot of information from this one subject. Number four, not number four, my bad. Number five will be planning. Planning is a key thing in this game, guys. You'd be surprised how much I had to plan out to get my stuff completed in this game. There's a lot of planning that goes into this game, guys, and I'm going to let you know that. So those are the five main keys. So we're going to go over number one right now. See you guys in just a bit. Okay, guys, at number one, we'll be covering what you should spend your gems on and what not to spend your gems on. So, this is going to be very interesting, guys. Now, you guys are going to be asking me, what should I not spend my gems on? Well, this is going to be basic. Never spend gems on speeding up breeding times or hatching dragons. Now, if you have a crazy amount of gems, I don't mind. You can go right ahead. It's your opinion if you want to. Now, I wouldn't recommend it. It's only if you want to, guys. Now, we'll also be covering wishes and what you should wish on and what you not should wish on in this topic, too. Because I need to do that with you guys because this is a big thing. And people do spend their wishes wrong a lot of the times. So I'm going to cover that also. So first of all, we'll get started with what you should buy in-game. Not in-game, I meant to say. With your gems. There we go. Now we're going to tell you what you should buy with your gems right now. So we're going to head to the market. We're going to head to buildings. I'm going to teach you what should be the first thing you get with your gems. If you can't afford it. So I don't recommend getting the dragon side of bush. I don't recommend getting the dragon side of tree. That's when you get later in game. If you have a lot of friends and you want to help them and support them, go right ahead. You can do so. I do not recommend it though. That goes the same thing with Goody's Treatery and also Goody's Sugar Shack. Now, the weather station is fine. You can get that if you want to, but I don't recommend it. It doesn't really support you any way possible, so I don't recommend it at all at getting it. Now, Monument and Relic of the Epics, I recommend getting later in game after you get a certain more objects, and that goes also with the Twilight Tower. Now what I do recommend buying for the first in-game item, now let me actually find it, if I can find it, it should be around here. Or maybe we passed it, we probably have passed it, nope, there it is, perfect. Magical Greenhouse, I recommend this. So this is like the first thing you can actually purchase with your gems, and this is a good item to buy, because every day you'll get a certain amount of food by your level. So one day you'll get your certain amount of food based on your level, and it's really good. This goes up over time too, so this does really help. So I do recommend this as your first item you should buy with your gems. Now, what you should do next with your gems is save up. Save up, guys. This is going to be a key thing. You're going to go for something huge. You're going to go for something insane. Now, you can either go for the Enchanted Breeding Cave, the normal one, or you can go for the Epic Breeding Island. Either one of those two work. So you can get the upgraded version of the normal breeding cave or the epic breeding island. I recommend the epic breeding island. This is why. Now, the epic breeding island gives you a better chance of actually bringing more epics than actually the enchanted breeding cave. But the enchanted breeding cave does get this one perk. It allows you to get 20% decrease on breeding time by 20%. So that's pretty good. I'll show you what that means in our step 3 on sites. Okay, guys? Because sites can actually explain that what that means more. Because it decreases time and I'm not good with time. So I'm going to explain a little more in depth there. Next, what I recommend actually doing that, after you've done that and you got yourself either A, the Enchanted Normal Breeding Cave or the Epic Breeding Island, 
you then want to save up to max out your hatchery. Now, why is that? Because hatchery spaces are really big in the game, guys. If you have one, it's going to be impossible to hatch all the dragons you produce from both those caves. So, or just one of those caves, because it, it does take up over time. And you breed like two dragons like every time, because you're going to have one dragon that's going to be either like a flower dragon that can really take spots, or it's going to be something else since you're starting out in the game. So this is why I want to max this out. Now, I could recommend this as being one of the first things you want to max out, but I recommend it as being like, you want to get like level two, then do some other stuff. But I recommend first getting yourself the epic breeding island, the epic enchanted normal breeding cave. So yeah. So once you got this little guy maxed out, you're pretty much all set to go. So yeah. Now, I recommend after you've done this and getting this all to level four, all four slots, and saving up, and stuff like that, you should probably start upgrading your either a enchanted breeding cave to the night enchanted my bad a uh, normal breeding cave to enchanted or that big breeding island depending on which one you got so if you got the enchanted breeding cave that's the normal one and you didn't get the epic breeding island I recommend getting it now if you did get yourself the in epic breeding island I recommend either upgrading a the epic breeding island or B the normal breeding cave. Now, I recommend doing the epic breeding island. This is why. Because you get more chances of actually breeding epics and gemstones. This is a big one. Gemstones. Gemstones help a lot, guys, in producing gems. So this is going to give you back money. The gems you spent to work to get this. Now, and it also gives you 20% decrease. Now, this does help insanely a lot. I do recommend it. So that's what I recommend. Now, you could go for the enchanted breeding cave if you got both islands at normal level. So it just depends on what you want to do. I recommend going for the most expensive one before you get yourself the cheapest one. Because then you knock the hard thing out of the way and you can go for the simple thing now. Okay. So next. Have you got all that stuff, guys? We're going to cover wishes next. So wishes can be used or gems can be used to get these objects. So there is something called the Gargantuan Island. You can get this with your wish or you can get this with your gems. Now, why I recommend this with your wish is because... If you use your wish on it, you'll get your wish after 100 days or you get it during a summer event. Summer events are very rare though. They give a wish, so I don't recommend it. So after 100 days, I recommend using your wish on A. You can do either of these three things. A, the Twilight Tower. B, Gargantuan On or Relic of the Epics. Now, why would I say Gargantuan On? Well, if you have enough space, guys, already, don't get the Gargantuan On. If you want to get your epics to higher level, get your epics to higher level with the Relic of the Epics. This will take them to level 15. And if you get Molly Myth Epics after getting Relic of the Epics, you can get yourself your Dragon to level 20. That's really nice. And that produces an insane amount of gold. Okay. Now, if you do have not enough space, I recommend getting the Gargantuan on. Now, if you have all these things already, guys, you have yourself Relic, you have yourself Monument, and you have yourself Gargantuan, get yourself a Twilight Tower. That's going to help a lot, guys. Because you won't believe how many times I've tried to breed a dragon that requires time in this breeding hint. So the Twilight Tower actually overrides this. Let's say for Misfortune. Misfortune needs a breeding time to breed from Misfortune. So Misfortune has, let's say, its breeding time is from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So with the Twilight Tower, you can override this feature by activating Nightfall mode or any mode that contains night. And that allow you to breed it during any time of the day. That's really helpful, guys, and that's why the Twilight Tower is the thing you should get after getting Relic of the Epics and also Monument of the Epics and also the Gargantuan Island. Now, what you do after you get every item in game, you can have some fun if you want to and get this earlier. You can get yourself for yourself the Weather Station. The Weather Station is an item in game you can get for fun. This item is for fun to get, guys, to make your background look cool. It doesn't do anything, doesn't really support you anyhow. Sadly, if it did, it'd be amazing. But yeah, it doesn't, sadly. But this is an item you can get for fun to have some fun and make your background look cool. And yeah, that's pretty much it what you can do with that. And now the other things I do recommend getting after you complete the game, guys, is probably something to support your friends and help them complete the game, which is the goodies sugar shack, the goodies treatery, and also the dragon saya tree, and also dragon saya bush. Dragon saya bush allows you to send an extra gem to your friends. This gives you a total of six gems to send to your friends. This gives yourself a total of I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember what this does. Let's see. I'm trying to remember correctly. This one allows you to send treats to your friends daily. And I believe this one right here actually allows you to send more treats. Yeah, it sends additional three more treats. I forgot about that. So yeah, these are more to support your friends at the end of the game. You can do this if you want to earlier and stuff like that, but that depends on you. 
Now, there are boosters in the game, too, guys, that can help you a lot, like the Monolith Booster, but this one costs gems, so I don't recommend it until you get like, later on in the game. If you wanted to get it earlier, you can, but I don't usually recommend it. And the Dragon Shrines you can get with your gold anytime, because we're not covering gold, and it's tips or tricks. Gold is basically a simple thing. You know what probably what to spend your gold on, and you probably don't. If you guys want me to cover that, I probably will in this video today, and we'll probably cover that as number six, but I don't believe we will. Because gold is something that, you know, you'll get a lot of. Your dragons will produce it for you. So there's no way of really covering it. I guess I can teach you guys what you should buy and what you should not buy. So actually, let's do that then. Let's let's do that as our number six. Okay. So, let's get on into what you should do with what items you should buy in-game and what you should not buy in-game. Okay, guys. I almost forgot about gems. I almost forgot something in gems that's very important. How to get gems fast. How to get the gems the most fastest way. Because you guys are going to ask me about this and I'm just be like, oh, I forgot about this. But I'm not going to forget about this, guys. This is very important. I need to teach you. Number one in getting gems fast is having a lot of friends on Facebook or Game Center. Now, Game Center won't work on iOS devices above 10, so I recommend having Facebook or inviting friends by link. Most people won't accept link, though, because link, links can be embedded with coding to be the viruses and stuff like that. So, Facebook is most likely your only way. If you don't have Facebook, you're pretty much done for, unless you have Facebook. Now, having a bunch of Facebook friends produces you a crazy amount of gems. I recommend it having Facebook friends, a lot of them. Now make sure that the Dragon Veil icon on the profile picture, that's how you know they're a true veiler, and that is the best PLA you want to get. Because they'll send gems every day. So yeah. Now that's number one. Number two being making sure that you have a crazy amount of gemstones. Those can help too. That can make you produce a crazy amount of gems. Now I know this is hard for new players and stuff like that, so I don't recommend getting a crazy amount of gemstones until later on in the game. So yeah. Now for number three, being racetrack and coliseum. Now, coliseum, you participate every day, and you always get first place. You're gonna get yourself five gems. That stacks up over time, and you can get yourself pretty much anything with those gems. Yeah, pretty basic. Those are the main three ways of getting gems. There's more ways, but these are basic for right now. I recommend these three ways. Now, coliseum is gonna be your best way if you're a new player. If you're an experienced player, you've been in the game already. Go for gemstone dragons and having a lot of friends on Facebook. With friends on Facebook are going to be for all. They can be for new players and for big players. Awesome. Now, let's get into number two, shall we? Okay, guys. So at number two, we're going to cover items. Items in game are going to help you a lot. So we're also going to count dragons as items too. So for right now, we're going to say dragons and items and what you should not buy and what you should buy in game. So we're going to start with dragons. I don't recommend buying dragons whatsoever, guys. In the game, I do not recommend buying them with your gems. It is a waste. I rather you just breed them, and and that also goes for wishing. Do not wish for a dragon, guys. It's it's really a thing you can just breed anyways later on in the game when they bring bring them back during the winter or during the summer. Usually they, they've been during, they have it right now literally. So they bring them back right now, guys. So you can breed this like right now if you want to, but I do not recommend it for anything like that. So bringing back comes down in the winter and also during the summer. Sometimes this is the first time it actually came during the summer, so I'm very much surprised. So yeah, so bringing back does really help this a lot. So I don't recommend actually wishing for dragons, buying dragons, or any of the sort. Just breed them. Just breed them. Nothing less. Just breed them. Okay. Next, in-game items that are helpful. These in-game items I think you want to buy. Now these are the things I would recommend: Epic Breeding Island being number one for breeding. Nursery maxing out number two, and actually number three would be, you know, upgraded breeding caves. These are gonna help you a lot, guys. So yeah, okay. Next, I recommend getting yourself relic and also monument the epics, or if you're looking for more space, the gargantuan on. But we've already covered this though, guys, and what you should, how you should get them. I recommend getting them with your wishes and stuff like that, and just the basics. So yeah. I could go into more explaining. The tree forms you definitely need to get though, guys. You need to get those as your first thing. Now, the good thing is they're with gold. So I'm gonna explain a little bit of gold right now. Maybe not nah, actually we'll save it for number six. I'm gonna go into more depth with it because there's a there's a lot of things you can do with gold and there's a lot more explaining to it. So we're gonna save it for number six. Okay. So we're gonna head into number three, guys, which is sites. Sites are awesome and they're so helpful when you're breeding dragons. They tell you your odds of what your dragons are probably going to get and they also tell the breeding time. So we're going to head to a site right now. I use a whole lot of time guys and you guys are probably going to love it too. So hopefully you do love it and go check it out. So we're going to head to number three right now. 
Okay guys, so at number three we have sights. Sights are amazing. I would not explain how amazing they are, but they are amazing. And let me explain how good they are. So, let's say Dragon Veil Sandbox. This is the one I'm going to recommend to you guys. This, guys, I've been using since the beginning of Dragon Veil and stuff like that. So, it's been really helpful. I do recommend it for new players also. It's a pretty simple thing. Let's say, for example, we're using the beginning dragons in the game. We're using, let's say, a plant fire dragon. So, all we have to do, guys, is go over here. We can look up plants, which is in the P section. Uh, let me find it. Which will be right over here somewhere. Where are you, little sly devil? Uh, let me find you. We'll just say pepper for right now, since we can only find pepper. And then after we do pepper, no, that's paper, my bad, and metal, that has five different elements. So we have the metal, fire, plant, earth, and cold. Now we can show you guys the normal breeding odds with bring them back, but we're not going to use bring them back. So bring them back is happening right now, guys, as we speak. But we're not going to do that. We're going to say for new players, and this is going to be for when bringing back's not back at all. Bringing back, if you guys do want me to explain it, it's basically when they bring back all the dragons during the winter time. Usually they do it sometime during the summer. They did it this year, which was pretty cool of them to do. But yeah. But we're not going to do bringing back for this video. So without bringing back, you can see all the dragons you're going to breed right here. It is pretty cool, guys, and stuff like that. And you can see you can get yourself rainbow dragons since they always come into the uh, occasion of when you breed four different elements. But we're using five different elements, so you can get a lot of more crazy stuff like gold, silver, and bronze and stuff like that and other dragons too so this site is really helpful guys and also tells the incubation time and then what I want to explain to you guys with the uh, early in the video was enchanted breeding caves and stuff like that and the epic breeding sanctuary how they give you a 20% decrease so if you got clicked up upgraded breeding caves right here this is what change the breeding time and that also tells you the 20% decrease so you can tell which dragons you got with the upgraded breeding caves so it is really helpful guys I do recommend sites a lot there's a few sites but this site is the one I'm going to guarantee you to use you just have to look up Dragonville sandbox and you found it and then if you want to look it up with uh, bringing back this time around since bringing back is out right now you can do so and check out every dragon you get with your possibilities and the upgraded breeding cave or an old one breeding cave by just checking it out on a site so it's pretty cool guys like you can see you can get yourself double leap year which is pretty awesome and all you guys want to do if you guys want to change up the two dragon you're breeding with and check into it let's say if i'm breeding myself um let's say mine mine with our metal dragon you can get yourself these dragons right here now, if you guys are wondering which gemstone you want to go after, because I get this question a lot, which gemstone is the best gemstone to go after? I'd say Topaz. Now, why is Topaz that? We're actually going to show you guys. So, Topaz is the best dragon to go after because of this main thing. So, first, we got to find ourselves our cactus dragon. So, let's go find ourselves cactus. Where are you, little man? Usually, he's around here. He's just uh, hiding. There we go, cactus. And then we also pull out Firefly. Which will be in the uh, section. Uh, oh, we there it is. Firefly. Now, Firefly will bring him back. Has a bunch of dragons occasionally. Now, if we unclick bring him back. Topaz is actually right in here. Oh yeah, it'd be if if yeah I forgot to take into account that it comes out only during November. So when it's November, guys, Topaz comes out, and its breeding hit is Cactus and Firefly. So you can even see it right here too. So with bring him back, you have a total of one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you have a 1 out of 11 chance, and then when you do it, when it's November, you have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you have a 1 out of 10 chance. So Topaz is actually one of the best gemstones to go after. And if you look at all these guys' breeding times, they're very short guys compared to a lot of other dragons who are uh, um, gemstones. So, and then if you have the normal, you can see they're still very short. So it's not too bad. So that's why I recommend going after Topaz as your first gemstone. And as to getting more of those guys, because they're super easy to get. Now, now that I covered which sites to use and what Jefferson you should go after and a lot more explaining, I'm going to go into the next thing for number four and we'll also cover gold as our number six. We're going to cover my knowledge, my knowledge of the game. So we're going to head into back to the park and go into that. I'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay guys, so now we're going to cover my knowledge of the game. I've learned so much from this game, it's insane, and I've seen other players who mess up big time. I've seen players who do everything right and complete the game in three years, and have everything. Every pedestal, every gemstone, every dragon, every, well, basically everything. So, I've seen a lot of stuff over the years, guys, and I can tell you guys who messed up and who have not messed up, but yeah, we're going to cover just the basics. Well, first of all, what do I recommend with your islands? Never 
decorate over decorate your islands guys never do that i do not recommend this for one reason i love it a lot when people decorate the islands make it super fancy and stuff like that and make these crazy designs these 3d designs and stuff like that with the new cubes and stuff like that the problem is it takes up a lot of space i'm gonna be honest here it does take up a lot of space so my one island i have a dragon design with uh cubes with it and that's my mistake i've done that i left it though because i like the decoration i've seen it from other people so i got inspired to do my own and I regret it sometimes. I regret it because I do not have enough space now. Sometimes I have enough space. Sometimes I do not have enough space. And in the past, I had none of the I didn't have all the islands in the game. And so I got all the islands. I felt much better. But I still feel like if I removed it, I would have more space to use. So that's why I don't over decorate my islands, guys. You can be using that island for, I don't know, a pedestal island. Which is perfectly fine to use for because you're going to need to get all the pedestals in the game at one point. And also a decoration island. A decoration island is where you place all your decorations in the game, and it's the same thing as a pedestal island. Now, it is really good to have. I do recommend it because it is very, it gets your island um, very uh, cramped and claustrophobic and, you know, unorganized, but, you know, it gets you that, uh, you know, 100% completed of all the decorations. So that's why I recommend a pedestal island and also a decoration island. Now, I don't recommend over decorating your island, like I've already said, but now let's, let's stand in the next thing. Next thing I'm going to cover is. Why do you spend your gems on speeding up dragons or hatching dragons? I can understand sometimes. I do it in my videos, but because I have enough gems. Now, if you have enough gems, guys, you can go right ahead and go crazy. Go crazy with your gems. Do anything you want with your gems. Now, my opinion is buy useful islands and useful items in game. I've covered this in the first tip already, but I don't need to explain that much more of or over it. If you guys do want to see it more, go check out the number one and then come back here if you want to. But I'm not going to go in too crazy, but we'll probably have to, just in the case. Okay, so I'm not going to cover that right now. I keep getting this little pop-up because I'm using a computer version of Dragon Veil, which is from Bluestacks. If you guys want to cover that in a video I've already have, uh, just go check out the guy video on how to get Dragon Veil on your PC. But carrying on, uh, that's getting off topic. Now, I recommend upgrading your cheat forms to max. The cheat forms are amazing, guys, to use and get stuff done. But don't waste your gems on also speeding up the food and stuff like that now i do recommend a few things guys if you guys are going to get anything in the game and speed up time kairos is the guy to go to i've learned the most powerful dragon and the most useful dragon would be kairos now the more useful item is probably the wishing well because you can wish for anything you want to except for legendary dragons and also new dragons and sadly a few other things that i can't remember on the top of my head because you know there's a bunch of other things you can't wish for sadly the main thing is like legendary dragons they used to be able to do that but sadly you can't that's from my past years of experience so I definitely recommend your wish on something useful like I've already covered in my earlier on number one I've covered a lot of stuff on number one I, I can't believe how much I covered that <laughs> I got really in depth right there so yeah but that's just my knowledge guys I have more to cover if you guys do want me to cover more of my knowledge just let me know I have a ton now I'm not gonna cover all of it because that would consume too much time Probably be up to 10 minutes long, and right now it's like 3 minutes and 46 seconds going up right now. So we're going to head into number 5, then head into number 6 will be gold. Because gold, we actually do need the cover. I just realized how important that is. So, I'll see you guys at number 5, planning. Okay guys, so this is a big one. This one you guys are going to need to know. Planning is key. Planning helps you so much in game. I cannot explain how much I plan. And this is this is a moral. This is also a moral, guys. Don't set long-term goals. Set short-term goals. Now, short-term goals are going to help you a lot. So set short goals like completing a certain amount of dragons in a certain category or going for a certain amount of dragons or trying to complete all the decorations. Now, long-term goals are fine. Our long-term goals are going to be probably the basics of getting every dragon in the game, completing all the pedestals, and also getting all the decorations. Now, decorations are going to be easier because when they do bring them back, you can buy them with gold. Because that's pretty basic because when they do bring them back, you can get like pretty much anything. Except for dragons because the dragons cost gems. Don't recommend buying them with gems because that's a waste. And that's more like $100 for a gemstone in our epic. It's actually way more than that. I've done the math. Um, but yeah. Okay. So planning. Carrying on. So planning helps you plan for what things you want to get. So planning is going to help you get what you want, what items in game you're going to get, and what gemstones. I say gemstones when I'm trying to say dragons, but you guys get what I mean. Basically, you need to plan a lot, guys. There's a lot of planning in this game. You'd be surprised. So let me, let me go for an example right here. I have planned to complete the game within the next three years, right? Some people do that. Some people pull the amazing luck of getting crazy chances and stuff like that, and they have the experience from other players. 
Now, for me, I didn't have that kind of experience, guys, and it took me seven years. Well, six years, but, you know, seven. But it's been a long time, guys, and there's a lot of planning that goes into it. Now, you think getting all the dragons in the game will be easy? Then you have to take into account, oh, yeah, the breeding times. They're going to be, like, hours long, and sometimes minutes. Minutes are nice. Seconds, um, only the plant dragon, sadly, and a few other dragons. But... Planning is going to be key, guys. I do recommend setting a goal. I do recommend setting a list of stuff you want to get done for your list. Check off the list. The short-term goals, not long-term goals. You set your long-term goal being collecting all the dragons and collecting all the pestles and decorations. That's basic. I do not recommend setting too big of a long-term goal, like completing everything in, like, I don't know, a year. That's that's silly. You can't do that. If, I, if there's somebody who does that, they probably hack. Basic. Unless they're, like... I don't know, Dragonvale Lord of the Game, they can pull it off. Basic. So, that's planning. Now, this was only, this is when, luckily this was only two minutes. I didn't have to go into any more depth because I could go into more depth about planning, but I think this is enough. Okay, we're going to head into our number six being gold. Gold. Oh man, gold treasure. You guys are going to love this. Okay, guys, we have finished up one through. Five. Now we're on the new one. Gold. I forgot to cover this. I almost forgot about this. This is actually another key thing. Gold helped you a lot. So, what things to buy with gold and what things not to buy with gold. First of all, buy the Coliseum, buy the racetrack, get those guys, and get those tree farms. Those are going to be your main things. And also, don't forget, those are going to help you a lot. Those are going to be see gold, food, gems, and also rift crystals. I should probably cover the rift too. Man, this is going to be a very long and intense tip video. Okay. I definitely recommend that. Spending your gold wisely is key. For tree farms, you're going to make sure you don't spend all your gold at once. Because there's some treats that in the beginning of the game you can spend all your gold at once. I don't recommend. Now, there's some gold tree farms I do recommend and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, I'm going to explain some treats. We're going to do that right now. I'm going to get in depth in this. So, if you're a new player, you're going to have a certain amount of treats. You're going to have... This, this, and this, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about this. I think this is upgraded, though. So, what I recommend is buying this, the Dragon Snaps or Dragon Roots. These are cheap, not too expensive. And I do recommend buying the Dragon Snaps and a lot of them. A lot of them. You can do, you can do a crazy amount of these, and I recommend this. Don't decorate your islands, guys, with gold. Don't do that. Not until you have enough gold or you have an over-exaggerated amount of gold, like the small account does right here. It literally has 56 million. That's, that's an over-exaggeration. So of how much gold I hit, you can have to do it. Now I do recommend saving your gold and upgrading your farms. And if you upgrade your farms, make sure you have enough gold to do so. So you don't spend all your gold on one farm. It's in, it's just silly. Why would you do that? You can do it and buy like I don't know islands. Not yeah islands. I recommend you if you do have a lot of gold, do buy islands. Islands can can make space. So that helps a lot. And make sure to spend your gold wisely. Gold on habitats wise, islands wise. Anything else? Galaxy Islands, wise. Anything else besides that? Not wise. Now, if you're getting Kairos, recommended. If you're getting the newly epic dragons, not epic, but legendaries, recommended. Because those are going to cost gold. And yeah, basic. That's what you want to spend your gold on. Don't do anything crazy, guys, with your gold. Don't go all out and spend every single piece of gold you have or dragon cash on one thing. Don't do that. Don't recommend it. Basic. Okay. So... We're going to have to head to the big account because I'm realizing we need to cover number seven, which is the rift. Now, the rift, I'm going to teach you guys how to produce a crazy amount of rift crystals and make sure you do so because this is going to be awesome. I forgot about number seven. I'm like forgetting about everything. I got one through five and then I had that six and now we're going to seven. Seven, we're going into it right now, boys. Let's go. Okay, guys. So here we are on our last one. Our last tip for a seven tip video. So, originally this was five, then I realized there was so much more stuff I could cover. And there is a lot more I can cover too. Now, if you guys want me to make a part two of this tip video, let me know and I'll create a part two of this tip video. Because this thing is long already and I do not want to keep going if this thing's insane. So, this, this is going to be a lot of tips, guys. I can keep going. I have seven years of experience. Heads up. Okay, I've learned when the Rift came out that the best thing you should do and the best way to get Rift Crystals is buy a crazy amount of habitats. Do not spend your Rift 
crystals on breeding until you have a bunch of habitats. So, you do need to get dragons though. I recommend when you get your first habitat, buy more habitats and get more dragons. Just repeat the cycle. Just get a bunch of habitats. Do not buy eggs of mystery. Do not do that. I recommend getting all the ripped habitats before you get those. You can get those if you want to for fun. Depends on you. If you're feeling like you deserve it, go ahead. Go ahead. It's your choice. Now, I do not recommend it, but go ahead. That's why I'm trying to save up and get myself all the rift habitats so then i can go crazy all i can do is go crazy buy more rift habitats say about those rift crystals guys that's the big thing make sure to buy those habitats and produce a crazy amount of rift crystals that's going to help you a lot and get sure that you get all the habitats so that is all i'm going to cover in this tip video for right now guys this thing's about to be like 30 minutes long i do not want to cover a 30 minute thing for you guys and if you guys do want me to create a part two of this tip video let me know in the comments and stuff like that. If you guys want me to, just make sure, and I will. So yeah, if you did enjoy this tip video, though, make sure to smash the like button. Stay tuned for more of my videos, guys. And don't forget, you guys are the best broskies, and hopefully I did help you out insanely. So, this is G-Man, signing out. Have a great rest of your day, broskies. See you next time. G-Man, out. Well, if you guys did enjoy this video today, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget, you guys are always the best, but until then, I'll see you next time in the next video. G-Man, out.